بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ویلکم ایوری باڈی ٹوڈے از دا فورتھ لیکچر آف دا چیپٹر آف سالڈس اینڈ دا ٹاپک از کلاسیفکیشن آف کرسٹلائن سالڈس نو دا کلاسیفکیشن ڈیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس ان دس لیکچر از ڈیپینڈنگ اپان دا نیچر آف دا بانڈنگ ان دا کرسٹلائن سالڈ سو آن دا بیسز آف دا بانڈنگ کرسٹلائن سالڈس کین بی ڈیوائڈیڈ ان ٹو فور کیٹیگریز آئنک سالڈس کوولنٹ سالڈس مالیکولر سالڈس اینڈ میٹالک سالڈس سو لیٹ ایس ڈسکس دین ون بائی ون اور فسٹ سالڈ ڈیٹ وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس از دا آئنک سالڈس نا دا آئنک سالڈس آر آلسو کارڈ ایز دا الیکٹرو ویلنٹ سالڈس وائی بیکاز آئنک بانڈ از آلسو کارڈ ایز دا الیکٹرو ویلنٹ بانڈ نو وٹ آر دا پراپرٹیز آف دا آئنک سالڈس دا فسٹ پراپرٹی از that ionic solids consist of cations and anions so the constituent particles of the ionic solids are the cations and anions usually cations are made from the metals and anions are from the non metals so ionic solids are basically combination of the positive ion of the metal and negative ion of the non metal second ionic solids have electrovalent or ionic bond the electrovalent or ionic bond is an electrostatic force of attraction between the cations and anions and this electrostatic force of attraction holds them together to make an ionic crystal now the ionic bond or electrovalent bond is a non directional bond when i say that ionic bond is a non directional bond it simply means that if there is a cation then that is attracted by an ion an ion in all directions with a equal strength so non directional bond mean that a cation will be attracted by anions in all directions with the equal strength similarly if there will be an ion that will be attracted by the cations in all directions with the equal strength you may also call it as ionic bond is basically omnidirectional omnidirectional again mean it is in all directions with the equal strength and because it is non directional or omnidirectional that's why ionic solids never show the phenomena of isomerism because in order to show the phenomena of isomerism the bond should be directional and covalent bond is directional bond so that's why the covalent compounds they show the phenomena of isomerism so isomerism is not a property of the ionic solids Now let us move towards the third one. Ionic solids have very high melting point and boiling point. And their high melting and boiling point are because of the strong ionic bonds that make the crystals of the ionic solids. Because breakage of ionic bond requires very high amount of the energy so in order to break break the ionic crystals you will have to provide high amount of the energy that's why they have high melting and boiling points fourth ionic solids are very hard and again the reason is the strong ionic bonds fifth ionic solids have very compact packing when i say that ionic solids have very compact packing it simply means that the empty spaces between the cations and anions are very less 
and when any solid has compact packing it means that its lesser volume has greater mass and when the lesser volume has greater mass it simply means that the density will be quite high because in lesser volume there will be greater mass so overall density will be very high so ionic solids have very high density number 6 ionic solids are non conductor in solid state ionic solids do not conduct electricity when they are present in the solid state and very important point the non conductivity of the ionic solids is not because of the absence of the free electrons because free electrons are related to the conductivity of metals or in case of some non metals like graphite but the ionic solids are non conductor why because of absence of free electrons no it is not the reason because free electrons have nothing to do with the conductivity of the ionic solids ionic solids are non conductor in solid state because ions are not free to move you know in case of solids only vibrational or to and fro motion is present so ions they are only showing the vibrational motion and because ions are not free to move it means they do not have translational kinetic energy and translational kinetic energy is required for the conduction of the electricity for the flow of the charges because cations and anions have only vibrational motion they do not possess translational motion so they are not free to move and the flow of the charge is not possible in the solid state so they will be non conductor in order to <coughs> make them conductor what we will have to do so if we want to make the ionic solids conductor they show conductivity either in the molten state or in the form of their aqueous solution when you melt the ionic solid their crystal lattice breaks and cations and anions they get free so conductivity starts and when you make aqueous solution you know that when the ionic solids are dissolved in water the lattice is broken down again the ions become free so both these cases in both these cases ions are free to move and when ions are free to move then conductivity starts that's why the electrolysis of ionic solids is possible only in their molten state or in the form of their aqueous solution in solid state electrolysis is not possible because there is no conduction of the current there is no movement of the ions you know let us move towards the next property ionic solids are soluble in polar solvents and the best solvent for all the ionic solids is water because polar solvents the molecules of the polar solvent they have enough energy to break the lattice of the ionic solids and then surround the ions that is called as solvation and in case of water it is called as hydration but if the solvent is non polar then the non polar solvent does not have enough energy to break the lattice of the ionic solid so that's why it they are so insoluble in the non polar solvents but they are soluble in the polar solvents and what is the reason of the solubility of the ionic solids especially in polar solvents or water suppose that when nacl is dissolved in water you know that after the breakage of the lattice and separation of the ions now the water molecules they surround the ions 
just like I am showing the sodium ion is being surrounded by the water molecules. Water molecules direct their negative end towards the positive ion and there are forces of attraction, intermolecular forces which are produced and these intermolecular forces are called as the ion dipole forces. And these ion dipole forces are actually responsible for the dissolution of the ionic solids in water. And when the ion dipole forces are formed and the ions are surrounded by the polar molecules of the solvent, then this is called as solvation. But here we have used water as a solvent, so that's why it is called as the hydration. And the amount of energy which is released during this process of the hydration that is called as the hydration energy. <coughs> Which is directly related to the charge of the ion and inversely related to the size of the ion. So, Ionic solids only dissolve in the polar solvents and the best solvent for them is water. Now let us move towards the next property. Ionic solids are brittle. Brittleness means that when the high pressure or force is applied on them, they break into the small pieces. Why ionic solids are brittle? Because ionic solids consist of layers of opposite ions. When you apply the pressure or you apply the force on the ionic solid, then the layers they slide over each other. And when the layers slide over each other, then the similar ions, they come across or they come in front of the each other. And you can see when the same ions will come in front of each other, it will result in the forces of repulsion. And because of these forces of repulsion, then the crystal of the ionic solids breaks and ionic solids are said to be brittle. They are not malleable or they are not ductile. Their sheets and wires they cannot be made. They cannot be forced into any desired shape just like the metals. So they are brittle actually. Now this was all about the properties of the ionic solids. In the next lecture we will come up with the structure of the ionic solids with special emphasis on the structure of the sodium chloride. Till then, Allah Hafiz.